Welcome everybody. We are going to get started today on making sure that we go through the rest of this probability PowerPoint and get through the rest of 4.1.1 um, uh, data exploration. All right. So gonna, again, we're going to take some notes today and I'm going to tell you exactly what to put down here. So we're going to start with this slide number 15. It's called uh, probability and multiplication. Okay, so when we read probability problems and we run into the word and, this means in math language that we are multiplying different probabilities. So the probability of A and B happening independently, okay, not at the same time or something like that, but independently is just the product of the two probabilities. Okay, so let's see this in action. What is the probability of rolling a four on a single die? Well, there are six sides to a die, right? So a four is just on one of the sides. That's so one. How many possible outcomes? Six. So the probability of rolling a four is one out of six. Same thing with the probability of rolling a one. One out of six. So what is the probability of rolling a four and then a one in sequential rolls? So it's the multiplication of the two probabilities. So one out of six multiplied by 1 out of 6, or 1 out of 36 of 2.78 percent. Okay, So whenever you see that AND in a probability question, you're being asked to multiply two probabilities. Okay, Again, they need to be independent of one another. You can't, uh, you can't roll a 4 and a 1 at the same time, obviously. So, um, so these two are independent with a die. Okay, It's similar when you see the word OR, except when you see the word OR in a probability problem, you are being asked to add different probabilities. Okay, so what's the probability of rolling a 1 or a 4? Well, the probability of rolling a 1 plus the probability of rolling a 4. Okay, so that addition. So let's take a look at this. So what is the probability of a 4 and a 1? You've seen this. It's 1 out of 6. So what's the probability of rolling a 4 or a 1 on a single die? And we have the probability of 4 plus the probability of 1, 1 over 6 plus 1 over 6 is 2 over 6, or 1 third, so 33.33%. Okay, again, these two things need to be uh, independent, uh, but that's very easily done with a die. Okay, you can also, when you see the word not, it's really simple. So what's the probability of not rolling a 1? Well, it's the probability, it's 1 minus the probability of rolling a 1. Right, so there are five other possibilities of the six, so it, that ends up equaling five over six. Right? Okay. So very simple language, and or a not; those three should all be in your notes. Okay. So now, if you don't have a deck of cards with you, it's really nice to have a deck of cards. If you've never played cards before or anything like that, um, a deck of cards contains fifty-two cards. Uh, they have four each of every card from two through ten. They have a jack, a queen, a king, and an ace. Okay. Now, if you're playing blackjack, if you've ever played that, you get two cards in blackjack. And uh, a jack is worth 10, and so is a queen and a king. But an ace can be worth 11, right? So to get a blackjack, you want to get to 21 points. So if you get a an ace, and then you get a card that uh, adds up to 10, right? So if it's either a 10, a jack a queen or a king. So that 11 plus 10 gives you 21 and you win and the dealer doubles your money, right? So um, blackjack is a really simple game, easy to play. So we're going to do some probabilities based on blackjack right now. So here's the question. Two cards are dealt from a shuffled deck. What is the probability that the first card is an ace and the second card is a face card or a 10, right? Because face cards, meaning jack, Queen, King are all worth 10. And then, of course, the 10 card is worth a 10. And there's four of every card, right? So how many cards are in a deck? 52. How many aces are in a deck? Four. How many face cards are in a deck? So that's Jack, Queen, or King. So that's three times four. That's 12. And then how many tens are in a deck? Four. Okay? So we're going to go through this problem. We saw that there is an and and an or in here. Okay? So let's do some probabilities first. What is the probability that the first card is an ace? Well, you have 52 cards. You have four aces, four divided by 52. 1 over 13, 0 0.0769, or 7.69%. 
Okay. Now the second one is a little is a little tough, right? So you've already picked one card. So how many cards are left in the deck? Only 51, right? Since the first card was not a face card, that means there's 12 face cards left. What is the probability that the second card is a face card? Well, there's 12 face cards left. There's 51 total cards left. This funnily re reduces down to 4 over 17 to 23.53 percent chance that the next card you're going to get is a face card okay but it can also be a 10 right so the next card could be a 10 and you'd be happy about that too so since the first card was not a 10 that means there's four tens left and since you already picked one card that means there's 51 cards left to pick from right so there's a 7.84 percent chance that you're going to have a 10 okay so let's do the math now with our ands and our ors so two cards are dealt from a shuffled deck. What is the probability that the first card is an ace? Probability of an ace right there. And so multiplied by second card is a face card or a 10. Okay, so they put that face card or a 10 in parentheses here because that's the second pick. The second pick could either be a face card or a 10 and you'd be happy to get blackjack either way. Okay, so probability of an ace, 1 over 13 multiplied by the probability of a face card, 4 over 17, plus the probability that you could pick a 10, 4 over 51. Okay, do the math, and it reduces down to 1 over 13 times 16 over 51. So there's a 2.41% chance that you're going to get blackjack with the first two cards that are that are flipped over. Okay, pretty unlikely, right? Uh, what would be the probability that you wouldn't get blackjack? Well, 1 minus... 2.41% or 100% minus 2.41%. So 97.59% chance that you're not going to get blackjack. Okay. Now, if, if you were given an ace, you know, that two point whatever percent chance it was, or uh, sorry, it was a uh, 7.69% chance. So you got an ace already. What's the chance that you're going to get blackjack now? What is the probability that the second card is a face card or a 10? So that remember, that's an that's the or statement. That's the addition statement that that's 16 over 51, and that's 31.37%. So if you're ever in blackjack, the first card's an ace. You have almost a one in three shot that you're going to get blackjack. Right? Okay. So let's move on. 23. Conditional prob probabilities are a little bit different here. Okay? So example, one card is drawn from a shuffle deck. The probability of it, it is a queen. We've done this before, right? There's four queens in a deck. There's 52 cards, so the probability of you getting a, a queen is 4 over 52, or 1 13th. However, if I already know it as a face card, we can we know this is a different probability now, right? Because that reduces this 52. How many face cards are in a deck? Only 12, right? And then there's four queens. So this is a conditional probability. So given that it's a face card, what's the probability it's a queen? So this would be 4 over 12 or 1 third. Different, right? Different questions. Okay? Okay? So that's the that's a conditional probability. They're written kind of weird. It's a probability of event E. So the probability of it's a queen. Given that it's a face card. Okay? It's read really, really strangely. Okay? Um, and, of course, this, this wasn't independent. So it could be a queen and a face card. Obviously, that's... That, that is how it is, right? And so we would, this would not be an independent uh, probability thing. If they are independent, the and just means multiplication. But if they're not, it, it's something different, okay? And let's go on to that something different. Now, this, is a, this looks like a big pile of equation right here. We're going to sort through this. It's not going to be uh, difficult to, to read through it, but we do need to read carefully, okay? All right, so this is called Bayes' Theorem. And I want you to write the definition of Bayes' theorem. Bayes' theorem calculates a conditional probability based on all the ways the condition might have occurred. Okay, so write that down. I also want you to write this equation down. I'll zoom in so you can see it nicely. Write that down as well. Okay, be really careful how you write that, please. Okay, here we go. Here's our, here's our problem. You will have a problem like this on your assignment for today. So let's get through this and, and understand how we use it. Okay, takes a little bit. We need to pick out some um, conditional probabilities and other probabilities. 
and know what they are and call them the right thing. So let's do that together. So LCD screen components for a large cell phone manufacturing company are outsourced to three different vendors, vendor A, B, and C. Supply 60% vendor A, 30% vendor B, and 10% of the required LCD screen components, right? So s vendor A supplies most of them, okay? Quality control experts have determined that 0.7% of vendor A, 1.4% of vendor B, and 1.9% of vendor C components are defective, right? Okay, so now the question comes in. If a cell phone was chosen at random and the LCD screen was determined to be defective, what is the probability that the LCD screen was produced by vendor A? Okay, it's not 60%. Okay, because, well, they have different defective rates, right? So what's the probability that if it's defective, it was produced by vendor A, right? That's a conditional probability. Let's go through and, and put the variables down here. So the notation used, P is probability, D is defective, and A, B, and C denote vendors. So the unknown to be calculated is probability that it's defective and it came from vendor A. So notice how I read that. The probability it's defective and comes from vendor A. Okay? All right. So let me read that again, actually. Probability that the screen is from vendor A given that is it is defective. I think that given that is that's the important part there. Okay? Given that it's defective, what's the probability it came from vendor A? All right, here we go. So known probabilities. You know the probability of uh, the screen is from vendor A, B, and C. 60%, 30%, 10%, putting these in decimal form, 0 0.6, 0 0.3, 0 0.1. Okay. Now, we also know that probability it came from vendor A and it was defective is given that it was, uh, given that it came from vendor A and was defective is 0 0.7 or 0 0.007. Okay, 0.7%. 1.4% and 1.9%. So you know all of these. Okay. Now, shoving them into the formula that we have, probability of that, given that it's defective, it came from vendor A, is equal to probability of A multiplied by probability of um, A's defective parts divided by all this other stuff. Notice the multiplications need to happen first, so these two will be multiplied, these two will be multiplied, these two will be multiplied, and then you'll add them up. Okay, you'll get a denominator, and then you'll multiply these two and divide by that denominator. Okay. So essentially what this is is probability of screen is defective and from A divided by the probability the screen is defective from anywhere. Okay, so here we go. Plugging numbers in, reducing down, 40% chance that that screen, that defective screen, came from vendor A. Okay, Doing the rest of them, um, vendor B and vendor C, j just as easy, especially vendor C. Once you have vendor B, it's, it's really simple. Okay, Notice the denominator stays the same for vendor B and vendor C. Okay, Nothing changes, only the numerator changes. Okay, So it's also 40% likely that uh, it came from vendor B, and it's only 18.5% likely that it came from vendor C. Notice when you add up all three of the probabilities, they equal one, right? That makes sense because there's no other way it could be defective. It didn't come from any other supplier. Okay, So in order to calculate um, the probability of the phone was produced by vendor C, given that the phone was defective, you really could have taken 1 minus whatever that, 0. 0.4 plus 0. 0.4, and you could have gotten that 0. 0.1845. Okay? So two ways to do that. Okay, so let's look at your assignment today. Uh, you're going to start out with number 9 and go through the rest of the assignment, including the conclusion questions. So the first one is simultaneously roll two dice 50 times and record your data below. So again, um, two dice. So again, if you don't know how to do dice, roll two dice. There it is. 
roll dice, and it gives you two random dice rolls. Okay? You do that 50 times, mark them down, and then add them up. Right? Okay? What is the relative frequency of rolling a summation of seven? Well, you're going to just add up how many, how many summations of seven did you get? So when you're adding the totals here on this side, right? Uh, you should have, you should have seven. How many times did you get a seven? Count them. Okay, what is the rel relative frequency of rolling a summation of 12? How many times did you roll 12? That's what it's asking here. Um, what is the relative frequency of rolling a six on a single die, right? So you rolled 100 dies here, right? You rolled two dice 50 times. So how many times did you roll a six? Divide by 100. What is the relative frequency of rolling a summation of six? And now this is where you're going to add up how many times did you total six out of 50 times. Okay. All right. Were your dice loaded? Justify your answer. Well, uh, good question. What should have all the outcomes been, have been? There's 36 total outcomes here. 36 total outcomes. If you add all these up, you get 36 total outcomes, right? I just added these frequencies up. I've totaled 36. So what's the relative frequency of rolling a, a summation of two? Well, one out of 36. What's the relative frequency of, or sorry, what's the, the theoretical frequency of rolling snake eyes? Snake eyes are, are one and a one. So it's one over 36. What's the theoretical frequency of rolling a seven? Well, it's six out of 36 or one over six. Okay. So that's how you're coming up with those frequencies. If you have questions on that, please let me know, but I need you guys to think through those problems and read through them very carefully. Okay? Were your dice loaded? Well, you tell me. If your frequencies are way off, right, then maybe your dice are loaded. But maybe it seems way off because you didn't roll as many times as you could have. Right? So there's a couple ways you can answer that. Number 10. One coin is flipped four times. What is the probability of flipping two heads and two tails? Okay, there's that and in there. Okay, coin is flipped four times. So you could either have heads, 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 tails, tails, heads, or tails, tails, right? What's the probability of two heads? One over four. What's the probability of two tails? One over four. So what would be the probability of flipping two heads and two tails, right? So this is, this is different. This is a little bit different. So flipping a coin four times. Think through that one. Think through that one really hard. Um, use the equation. Use the equation that you got from right up here. Uh, let me find it for you. Use this equation right here. You roll fold four times, right? Two heads or two tails, right? This is where this is what you're using. You're going to use that twice to calculate through uh, your your answer for this one. Okay, probability of two heads. Okay, head showing up twice. So four flips, head showing up twice. Four flips, tails showing up twice. Right. This is what you're using. That and is going to be uh, the multiplication, right? Uh, a set of two die are rolled twice. So it's a set of two die are rolled twice. What is the probability of rolling snake eyes on both rolls? I kind of talked through that already, right? One over six to roll snake eyes once. What is the probability that that would happen twice? Okay, and then number 12 is just like the problem we went over in the last part of the PowerPoint. Um, take a look, read through these, set it up really carefully, uh, just like they do um, in the slides themselves. All right, if you have any questions, let me know, and I'd be happy to help you out. All right, take care.